Yes, we are looking at the current proposals that are on the table, both from developed and developing countries. And we have been kind of filling these proposals into the, these categories that uh, you see also you saw on the previous slide. Um, we have also done a look at the estimates of BAU emissions because there is a certain, yeah, I would say there's a certain debate obviously to be had will be the uh, overall emissions globally under BAU conditions exactly 61 gigatons as assumed in the McKinsey Global Greenhouse Gas Abatement Cost Curve or will it be 60 or 59? And when we look at the literature, our 61 gigatons are a little bit on the higher end. So assuming both the uh, divergences in the literature on BAU plus some uh, effects of the economic downturn, maybe the required abatement could be 15 to 17. You see it on the left side. We work so far with 17, but it could, we could be lucky, could be only 15. Second, we have looked and, and analyzed the kind of proposals that are on the table. And if we look at a high case, we have divided the proposals from the, the various countries into a high case, which is, for example, for Europe, the 30% below 1990, and into a low case, which is for Europe, the 20% below 1990. In the US, for example, the low case would be uh, the uh, legislation that is already uh, enacted by the Obama administration on mileage standards, also some impact of the stimulus package. And that would be the low case and the high case. We have taken a Waxman market for the moment. Um, so adding this all up together, it adds up to 5.2 gigatons below our BAU, or 18% um, uh, below 1990. And out of these, we have also made an estimate how much the uh, various offset limits that are under discussion, and obviously in some countries this is not yet determined, but we have come up to a rough estimate that out of these 5.2 gigatons, around 1.3 is likely to be done via offsetting, could be a bit more, and 3.9 would be domestic reductions. Um, if we look at the developing world, we see that the overall um, announced actions add up to 4.2 gigatons below BAU, or 11% below this BAU. So um, we have not yet been able to determine which part of this will be self-financed, which part will be financed with uh, public finance. Um, but it gives us an order of magnitude what is available in terms of actions from developing countries, which leaves us a gap of six to eight gigatons to a 450 ppm pathway. So there is still quite a considerable gap to be closed. We have furthermore um, looked at what developing countries need to do in order to um, make a deal along the lines that Jules has presented happened. So uh, our analysis of the five gigatons domestic plus nine gigatons um, of, supported, of support for developing countries action, and those nine gigatons subdivided into three uh, with carbon finance under aggregate 25% cap and six uh, of public finance. So, uh, but if we say it's, um, our uh, required abatement might be slightly lower to to lower BAU, it might be four to six. Now, if we divide these three components, which are here depicted as one, two, and three, according to a certain rule, we can derive a benchmark what each developed countries would need to, to deliver. And the first component, the domestic abatement, we are dividing up according to the geographical location of the abatement opportunity under 60 euro per ton. So essentially there's a certain part of these five gigatons that are located in the US, another part which are located geographically in the EU, others in Russia, Japan, and so on. The other two parts, the, the column two and three, the carbon finance and the public finance, we have as a very rough first cut divided up according to a key which takes into account 
the polluter pays and the ability to pay principle represented by GDP and current emissions. Now, if we do this, I mean, obviously, that's a very rough metric, but it, as a first cut, uh, it gives us an idea what individual countries ought to come up with. If we do this, uh, we come to the next picture, and that's a bit of complex, but uh, still useful picture. You see on the left side, essentially the contributions from various countries, their kind of fair share according to that benchmark, and this is composed out of domestic reductions, carbon market finance, and public finance. And you see that, and this is all against BAU in gigatons. And you see it adds up for the US to 5.5 gigatons below BAU for the EU 27, 4.4, for Japan 1.3, and for the total developed 13.8. Now, the high case of the current proposals you see in the middle, and essentially you see that uh, under waxman marke you will have a total of 2.5 gigatons of abatement, out of which 0 0.7 would be public finance. We interpret the set aside for forestry reductions, which is on top of that, which is not offsetting, but which is on top of the cap as public finance. So you find it represented here. And we have taken maybe an overly um, kind of aggressive assumption that the full um, offset possibilities in Wexman Marke of one gigaton would be exploited. It might be in reality then turn out to be less, but that's uh, how we depicted that. But you see at the moment the 2.5 gigatons in the US under Wexman Marke, and this would lead on the other hand to a gap to the benchmark of 3.0 gigatons, out of which 1.7 would be essentially a public finance gap and 1.2 would be uh, essentially a, a gap in domestic abatement. So essentially, under this assumption, U.S. would not fully exploit its domestic abatement opportunities. We have, uh, in, for under the current proposal high case, we have depicted a 30% reduction of EU below 1990. Um, the EU has not yet defined how much offsetting will be allowed under a 30% reduction. So we have simply put an arbitrary number here, so the distinction between the dark green and the lighter green uh, is, is arbitrary, but it was important for us to have the overall abatement currently represented, not, not the exact distinction between, in that case, offsetting and domestic reductions. But these add up to 1.6 gigatons against the benchmark of 4.4. We have not yet represented the uh, financing uh, from the European Union because apparently the European Council, as most of you will know, has not yet stated how much uh, money the European Union would be able, a public finance, uh, the European Union would be able to contribute to the financing requirements. In, in Japan, you see that there is also a, quite a considerable um, amount of abatement in terms of the cap. We have also arbitrarily uh, drawn a line between offsetting and domestic reductions, but the gap there essentially is a public finance gap. Yes, maybe. What does this lead us to if we look this collectively? Uh, 